This video is going to cover the topic of finding a percent of a number. Be sure the date and topic are at the top of your page. The essential question that this video will cover is how can we use ratios to calculate the percent of a number? Let's remember, as always, that percent is a ratio out of 100. And we remember that, of course, because cent means 100, so it's out of 100. And we've seen before how we can set up an equivalent ratio to help us work with percents. Let's draw that out again so we have that as a reference. In our equivalent ratio, we would take the part and put it over the whole as a fraction, and we know that we could find the percent by finding the equivalent ratio if we scaled it to 100. And we would do the same thing on the top. Right? We've done that before. However, in the past, we've been looking to find the percent. But now we're going to look at what happens if we know the percent, and what we don't know is the part. If the part is missing, and that's what we're trying to calculate. For example here, right, we would know that there are 50 people in a particular place, and we know that 16% of them are wearing hats. What we don't know is the portion, or the part, out of the original group who are actually wearing hats. We don't know the actual number, right? 16% would be 16 out of 100, and that's not how many people are in the theater, right? So 16 people aren't wearing a hat. 16% of the people are wearing a hat. So let's use this example to look at our equivalent ratios, or proportions, to help us figure out how many people are actually truly wearing hats. I have to think about what it is I know, right? What I know is that the whole group is 50. So I'm coming up here and I'm looking at uh, my original setup. My whole goes on the bottom here. So the whole number of people is 50. I also know that 16% of them are wearing hats. So I know that that's out of 100. And I know that it would be a ratio of 16 out of 100 were there to be 100 people there. What I don't know is this. I don't know the part, the actual number of people. But if I look at my proportion, I can kind of just see some information that will tell me this, right? Because I know that 50 times 2 would be 100. So really, all I have to do is figure out what times 2 is 16. And I know that off the top of my head, but if I didn't, I could always divide 16 by 2 and say, oh, right, it's 8. So 8 people are wearing hats. Right? And that makes sense, because if I put an 8 here, these ratios are equivalent. So the part of the people at the theater who are wearing hats is 8. 8 people. Let's do another friendly example. We'll get to a harder one after this, but let's do another friendly example. This time I'm not going to put it in the context of a story. I just want to know what number is 20% of 10. So again, let's fill in what I know. Right? Remember, this is part to whole percent out of 100. So I know that I'm looking for a number that's out of 10. So 10 is my whole. And I know that the number I'm looking for is equivalent to the ratio of 20%. So it's 20%, which is 20 out of 100. Right? So this is the one I don't know. That's my question mark. Right? But again, I picked a nice friendly number here. So I might think to myself, okay, well, 10 times 10 is 100. So my mystery number here, times 10, equals 20. And if I don't know that off the top of my head, I could do 20 divided by 10, and I would get 2. So 2 is 20% of 10. Let's try another example. This time, we would just want to know what number is 15% of 40. What is 15% of 40? And I like using my setup here to figure this out. Right? So we have 15%. I know that that's 15 out of 100. That's one part of my equivalent ratio. And I know that my whole number is 40, but I don't know what number it is out of 40 that's equivalent to 15%. So this time, right? this one maybe not be as obvious, although we use this example a lot, we want to figure out what 40 has to be multiplied to get 100. And again, you might need to do a little division here on the side if you don't have that off the top of your head. That is 2 and a half. Right? 
So then I have to figure out what number times two and a half is 15. And again, that might be something that we can do in our head. It might not be. If not, you can work backwards. So I'm going to do here 15 divided by two and a half to figure it out. And I'll have to move my decimal, add a decimal and move it. And I'll find out that it's exactly six. Right? So 15% of 40 is six. Six is the number that would fit here to keep that equivalent ratio. As you do this, remember that your answer won't necessarily be a whole number. You could have a decimal or a fraction in your answer. Take a look at this for example. Right? We want to know what 10% of 5 is. So rem remember we can look at this as an equal ratio, right? So it's 10%. 10 out of 100 is some mystery number out of 5, right? This is the whole here, 5. And just looking at it already, I can tell my answer is going to be less than one whole, right? Because I have to multiply 5 by 20 to get 100. So my number has to be multiplied by 20 here to get 10, which makes me think this is going to be a pretty small number. And if I work backwards by dividing 10 by 20, I'll find my number here is 1 half, right? 0 0.5. So half is 10% of 5. So just keep in mind that sometimes our answers won't be whole numbers. Sometimes they'll be a little bit messier than others. Remember the essential question of this video is how can we use ratios to calculate the percent of a number? So we saw a few examples of this. We were able to set it up as equivalent ratios and then just try to figure out the part that was missing. There's a second strategy that we'll be able to look at tomorrow. It's another way that you can find the percent of a whole or a percent of a number but we'll be practicing this way to get us started and get us comfortable.